Oh, oh my. Oh hey, my. everybody. <laughs> Welcome to wow. Between the Rolls, where we're going to talk about more New Year, new character. Wait, New Year, new you. Part mm -hmm. do? Part that, do. Part do. Duh. 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 Like those stupid French people. Duh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, anyway, hey, we're here again talking tonight. We've got uh, uh, Frank, David, Carol, and myself, Kyle. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Scott. Uh, oh. Scott has uh, left us, but in tribute, I have a joke. Uh, uh, did you guys know that uh, when chickens have sex, they die? No. no I'll bite. No. Yeah, I bite. fucked a chicken last night. It died. <laughs> Oh my god, that joke that's died, Scott's, man. That's, no, Scott's that's joke. from Scott's joke. <laughs> I, I know it's a reference to Scott. Man. It's Scott. That's yep. what you get for choosing your wife over us. She's my wife. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was, yeah he, it's he had date night with his wife, so. Oh, I hope she's not a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Scott gets lucky and she is. <laughs> I bet Scott's oh. wife doesn't know that story <laughs> <laughs> yet. She yet. watches. We know she that. watches the show. <laughs> oh yeah, sure she does. Uh -oh. All right. Well, before we get too crazy into it, let's go ahead and go around and introduce ourselves <laughs> a little bit more than I did. Starting with Carol. Carol, tell us a little bit about oh. yourself and what kind of stuff you do. Wait, I go first. Holy crap! Okay, so hi everyone. My name. All is... right, we're done with Carol. And... <laughs> You're such a dick. Hey, yeah, and we, hey, you know, it wouldn't be a week without somebody, especially Kyle, talking over me. So, so do I get to go next? <laughs> no, 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 that's me. <laughs> all, right, all right, so I'll say hi. My name's Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. I uh, was playing Terran on the campaign here, and I can't wait. I'll be playing something on the Thursday night version of the campaign here, or the Thursday night edition of the campaign here that will be starting in February, we think. Uh, maybe, possibly. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> next, we have to get David. it together. Oh, my gosh. Pick a campaign, people. Uh, David, your turn. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, I'm David. I am... Usually here on Between the Rolls, and I'm in our Thursday show, Cacophony, the ongoing soap opera. Uh, the days of our cacophony. Every once in a while, I'll get a one shot. So, yeah, Thing, things are good on this on this channel for me. Now, um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I guess if you were to put it like in like school years wise, I'm roughly about a sophomore player, so... So coming up on, you know, fifth year senior. <laughs> yeah, fifth year senior. That's it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that explains. Sometimes I have some insight into things, but, you know, we'll see. That's why they let me on the show here. <laughs> so, anyway, that's me. Take it oh, away, right. Kyle. <laughs> oh, me, but I'm the I'm the host of the show, so I get to introduce myself last and give ah. myself all all the accolades, shower accolades I'm all over me. <laughs> so, Frank, why don't you go next? Uh, folks, welcome aboard. I'm Frank. Uh, <laughs> I am just going to be a participant in this show, and uh, I'd like to thank Pirate Dog Dice and, of course, OddFishGames.com. See, that's not. Uh, that's not sewer, huh? sewer so that smells great so oddfishgames.com yeah, yeah, yeah. if your game stinks try oddfishgames.com long time hey. gamer i'm the guy with the beard who could buy beer for everybody at high school that's how there. i remember <laughs> i don't think i can i still don't pass for 21 right sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 no, actually, she probably does. It's just no. so short. <laughs> Poor Carol. I'm not that short. <laughs> I don't short. look under 21 anymore, but uh, I don't look, I don't think I look like I'm almost 50 either. Hey, didn't you get the chance to speak already? God, yeah, God, God show. Show, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just nice to let people talk and then I don't have to actually worry about anything, uh, which is why I'm going to be DMing the campaign coming up in February unless it doesn't actually happen. What? Caitlin. It's uh, going Earthy, to happen. DJ it's... Carol. 
hey, wait, it's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm running stuff here, um, and Yay! tonight as well, because I'm awesome, I'm amazing, I'm a great listener. I just let them talk and talk, and it's wonderful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine, <laughs> gosh. Ah, I don't want to do the things now, it's not fun. <laughs> but you can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our archive on Twitch, or go over to YouTube. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D or replace one of the people on my campaign, Carol, what? then you no. can join us on Discord channel. <laughs> no, If you, you want to get not. some cool RPG swag for friends and family, there's a link somewhere down there over there. There they are. There. Yeah. Uh... yeah. And Yo, again, I got RPG what? swag from my art store. Ooh. And I'm, most I'm importantly, never around. most importantly, if you're a great player and you're looking for a game to play in, hit us up again on Twitch, Twitter, or uh, 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 mhoboinc at gmail.com. I really need someone to replace someone. Carol. Uh, <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> thanks to our sponsors over at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, if you're rolling like shit, then get their dog shit dice. Ooh, You'll really cool. roll like shit. Then. The only one who's got the dog shit dice is Kyle, I believe. And of course, Frank already mentioned them, but you know I'll mention them again because they're worth it. Oddfish mm. Game Adventure Sense. They're uh, awesome. I do have uh, putrid sewers. Don't do it. Again, I'm going to keep it back over here this way. <laughs> Give it the long way around. Uh, uh, but they also have their Shine Project, where uh, if you're unoriginal like myself and you need help writing a campaign or any sort of storybook, take a look at there and they'll ask you some important questions. Oh my goodness. I think that's everything. I read I read the list. Uh, podcasts also. Podcasts also. Oh, God, I actually I have it you. written here. But then over here I have, uh, uh, if you go to tinyurl.com slash audio, that's uh, M-H-O-B-O-I-N-C-K-A-U-D-I-O. You can, uh, and Bingo was his name, oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you can uh, uh, download the podcast there and listen to it on audio. <coughs> uh, what episode are you at to now, Frank? Uh, I just uploaded uh, three between the rolls and seven more shows. I think I'm low 78, 80, 78. 84, something Gosh. like that. You know, uh, Kyle, this is between the rolls 100. What? This is 100. Oh. This is Holy crazy. mackerel. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, by the way, I think uh, the podcast is the only place you're going to get the very earliest stuff because if I recall, you said some of the stuff has been dropping off of YouTube because it we has. have so much content that we've run out of room on the YouTube archive. We are yep. prolific. Yes. <laughs> He's Frank is really prolific. He's the most prolific writer of the I thought you, Carol, had you one saw those Frank. pictures in confidence. <laughs> That's what oh, really? I don't oh, know. no, wait. Kyle's the only one that's seen Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I've been sent any dick pics, you know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, look, there's three of them on screen right now. <laughs> there you go. Hit. Still, <laughs> hit the camera. Still. Which brings to our third sponsor, uh, uh, Man Grooming Landscaping. Uh, yeah, there we go. To, uh... oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but besides uh, shamelessly endorsing our sponsors, uh, uh, we also play games here. Ooh, we do. Pirates? What are the pirates? That is uh, pirate ship. Pirate ship. Pirate it smells ship. a little bit like deodorant, though. To be honest. Now, Rowdy Tavern. <laughs> Rowdy Tavern, they hit that one on the head. Ooh. Smells like decapitation, David. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, oh, that yeah. one's biting. Oh, ears. yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay. I feel like I'm missing <laughs> something. So, uh, David, why don't you tell us what happened on uh, last Thursday's episode? Well, the Coffee. Thursday before last, from fans said my, the look on my face was priceless, but. <laughs> But this week, uh, this past week, uh, is our episode, uh, let's see, what are we calling it? What are we calling it, Frank? 189 On the Road, on again. The road again. On the Road Again. Yes. 
So, well, that picks up where we left in Cacophony. Uh, we were looking for rooms <laughs> for the night uh, after almost demolishing the two buildings, I think. So, <laughs> so anyway, we skedaddle out of there. We look for, for a place to stay. And uh, yeah, we decided to unload that mana <laughs> uh pelt that we fought so long and hard for. Anyway, long story short, yeah, we ended up not making a good deal. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, from there, we, we start out uh, with the Telosians uh, the very next day. And um, yeah, it is, um, we're crossing the Great Plains, folks. So uh, at the beginning of the adventure, we do a little uh, hunting uh, with the Telosian party and uh, hunting the great red buffalo after we saw her go by. Uh, after that, we made our way to their um, <laughs> S sort of stronghold it's a fortress you know kind of like f troop you know or something like that <laughs> those of you, you that get the reference oh my god that day too yeah it does oh, I get the Kyle, you gotta see f troop that f -troop is, is awesome Murder hobo week right there yeah. and, and, oh my god that's right show, mm -hmm. show it was show, a great show, show. Uh, comedy Ken, from from what the 60s I think. 60s ken berry uh yeah somewhere like oh, yeah Forrest Whitaker. Oh yeah, there there was a couple. Wait, it was Forrest Whitaker comedy, not Forrest Forrest Tucker. Sorry, Forrest oh, Tucker. Okay, I was That's gonna right. say. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, this uh, show was uh, shot in the sixties. Uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even the Indians were kind of white in the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is not politically correct. The, yeah, that was the days be days before. You know, the days okay, before YouTube, was you gotta catch it. It's so hilarious. we digress. <laughs> yeah. Little. So uh, we ended up uh, meeting uh, kind of at this halfway point with the Telosians. Uh, it was uh, like their stronghold. And we find out why it was built like a fort. Because one of the things that, and we didn't run with the joke, was the werewolf joke <laughs> from Young Frankenstein. Werewolf, their fortress. So anyway, comes to find out that there is a perceived threat of uh wolves dire wolves and something called maka maka being telosian word for werewolf so anyway chaos ensues later on that <coughs> night uh yeah so we end up getting a maka attack and uh yeah you'll just have to find how many on, of on you YouTube. came down with lycanthropy though None of us. Ah. None of us. And you'll have to find out why. So look up the episode and check it out. It's a really good episode. I mean, guest stars like Emerald Lagasse shows up. Uh, yeah. So it's great. <laughs> Bam. great. Wow. Exactly. That comes in. <laughs> yeah. Did he make, yeah. wait, did he make something with Wolf's Bane in it or something that you ate? No, no. Zadar I would got, do it. Z Zadar got cooking lessons. So. That's, That's friggin' cool. And a reward. Yeah. Did and it end up better than those dancing lessons you gave to uh, Dolly for Susie? Uh, nothing beats those. Oh, <laughs> I gave, you, I you gave her those. Wait, 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 wait. You, David, you failed on your role for the dancing lessons. Yeah, I did. So, so it was. It was I didn't. I <laughs> nat 20 that bitch. Yeah, you <laughs> did. I think In case you're wondering what we're talking about, folks, you have to look at our holiday episode that Carol did. Oh my God, she was, it was an amazing episode. So. Check out our archive on Twitch and on YouTube. Yeah. And who knows, I've heard a request that those goblins should return someday. So maybe oh, yeah. they will. Wasn't yeah. me anyway. Frank, uh, you might <laughs> actually get in a campaign. <laughs> uh, hey, maybe. That's not true. I'm holding out for David's campaign. Oh yeah. god! Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no! What? Let's not push it. I'm holding out for David's one shot. Let's we'll see about that. One <laughs> shot, man. We'll, we'll start slow. That's that's a goal for this year. So anyway, we'll get to it. Yeah, like so, a Saturday one shot run by David. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, um, this past Saturday we had a one shot run by Frank. Uh, <laughs> Carol was in it. I believe it was a uh, four level one adventures. Taking hold of Beholder Swamp? What happened there? 
I'd ask Scott, but he's not here. I know. Yeah, thanks, I, I was like, I was like, okay, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to remember what the fuck happened. Now he's not here, so it's like, oh uh, shit. A memorable experience. It was. It was. It was a lot of fun though, because I think. Um, so basically, what well, we had to deliver a message to a hurricane ravaged town, which I believe was just. Hey, how you do? Uh, it wasn't a like just, you know, are you okay there or whatever. I think it was somebody checking on a loved one, if I recall correctly. <laughs> it was New Orleans, folks. <laughs> yeah, New Orleans kidding. after Katrina, I think. Pretty much, yeah. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> so we had to go across this this swamp. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, so that means there was all sorts of uh, fun the fun and game this swamp i mean there's all sorts of things you can throw your players that are in swamps leeches. but mostly it was yeah there were some leeches but those weren't really combat things who was it that got the leeches scott scott got the right. remember where did I, he get those oh leeches <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so scott scott was playing a monk called the shaft and the he was just like say watch the episode because you know us if you watch us and if you don't <laughs> be prepared right. it was a good wholesome episode Carol. oh what sure. are you talking you know, about <laughs> i'm talking about you know uh uh since i was playing a gnome uh it, you know and shorty we were all shorties except for scott who was playing a human monk named the shaft and not shaft as in isaac k shaft uh i think it was just the shaft to get as much humor and uh, bad joke, bad taste jokes out of it as possible, including my goth, uh, my goth gnome cleric. Great. Did you slide down a shaft in that show? No, no, I just rode the shaft. Ah, oh, that's right. She Thank got the rode shaft. the shaft. Across. I rode the she shaft. Understands she, the she shaft. Rode the she shaft. understands the shaft. So the she day. got it. He was she hilarious. He he referred himself in the third person uh, the whole night. It was. And he, oh, and he always knew the way, except for when he didn't. And of course, we had uh, we had an awesome ranger played by uh, Rob, I'll call Rob, Rob Tulu. Rob Tulu. Oh. Uh, Rob, he was awesome. Uh, great first time player, and um, <laughs> he's a long time GM. I was about to say he had, the first -time he had player, twenty man. years without a break. <laughs> Glad we were able to give you a break. Uh, but yes, and he's he's watching too. So hi, Rob. <gasps> Screw you, Rob. You took my we, place. We, in the we have one. We got <laughs> one viewer. <laughs> Actually, we had two. We had two because a friend of mine also was watching too. At least he was. Screw um, you, Rob, Heidi. Oh. No, it's not Heidi. Heidi's okay. playing it right now. Actually, playing Cthulhu right now. Uh, oh. DJ is running a Cthulhu pop game right now. I digress. Anyway. I know, and uh, I'm trying to get him into a Cthulhu themed D&D adventure. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, we'll talk more. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't worry. We're not but, doing spoilers yet. Come down. But, uh, but so, so a lot of Behold a Swamp was we were attacked by a wasp. And why were we attacked by a wasp? Because we met a guy right at the beginning who sold a uh, crappy map. Dave? Was that his Dave. name, Dave? No, he What's gave. Gabe. Dave. Well, no, he sold. No, he sold, but he sold. He had magic stuff for sale. And so somebody bought the jerky. I'll tell you what, by the episode, I wish I had bought some of that jerky. I thought of it too. I was like, eh, maybe not. Um, eh, by the end of the episode, I was wishing we had more of that. Believe me. <laughs> I kicked the shit out of him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frank really did kick the shit out of us. It was not so much all the wasps. They were pretty easy to defeat. I think he kept rolling badly on those. You should have made them kept, Sturges. <laughs> but we kept basically, uh, I think because we uh, were, or more or less uh, Ernie's character, uh, Russell, who hates tall people and. Uh, Russell! He, Good character. Basically, I think he offended him and he gave him. Like he bought some of the jerky, which was actually like a one d six potion of you know curing wounds there. But uh, he also gave him this little uh, uh, mosquito mosquito mm -hmm. pin, which meant that every freaking flying bug in the area was going to come and attack us. At least I think that's what it meant. But what was funny was the shenanigans because Lucas managed to put the pin on the shift. Uh, 
Uh, but it didn't really matter. The things would keep attacking us anyway. So the shaft, well, we had to actually take a rest because we get the, we get this, we get the crap kicked out of us. It wasn't them. It was the skeletons that kicked the crap out of us. I'm trying to think of what else we fought. I know about the uh, thing at the end. That's the thing at the end. Was there anything else other than skeletons and? Yeah, you guys guys missed a lot of stuff. That's that's, scary, spooky skeletons and shivers. The skeleton fight ended up being the tough one. That ended up being the toughest fight that really kicked the crap out of us. And then, uh, but I think we had rested before that (laughs) because there were a lot of wasps, and people did take enough damage. That I, I know I needed a rest because I was running out of hit points. But by the end, yes, the last thing was the freaking gas spore, which he, way Frank did it, and of course it's Beholder Swamp. It sounded like it was a beholder. And I'm going, I'm going, my brain, there's no way he'd throw a freaking beholder at a first level party of adventurers. Because I don't. Might be. <laughs> no, I, that, I was, before. I was pretty sure he wasn't going to sort of sort something, but I was like, and I should realize gas for because you used them before. But uh, I believe it did da- it did enough damage to take out the monk. And if it wasn't for the fact that I'm playing a freaking cleric that can, you know, that has uh, um, basically stabilized. I can't remember the name of the spell. The, the, spare the dying. Spare spare the, the thank dying. you. Spare the spare dying. dying. <laughs> Basically, she spared the dying him all the way home because he was poisoned and he kept taking damage. I have to keep having to do that. So it worked out. He said he said survive. But I imagine Luna, my my cleric, probably was exhausted at the end because I think if you blow enough cantrips, you actually do start taking points of exhaustion, if I recall. I don't. I've never really done it. So should have let him turn into a mushroom farm. <laughs> that would have been amusing, but that's just not in. That's just not in. That's not. That's not how I play. I try I, to save. People. I saw that episode of Hannibal. <laughs> Although she does think life is kind of futile, and that the big game is on. That the real, the real life really begins actually when you die and you go to the other side, because then you're there forever. So, this is just short term. So that that's a basic rundown, but there was a lot of funny, sh- a lot of funny shit that happened in that game. So check out the archives. Or the video is still up on Twitter for uh, on Twitter, hey, on Twitch for a couple weeks. So it was great, good and well, well, well constructed. I thought it was it was a ton of fun to play. So that would be. I- I do have a question, Frank. So mm-hmm. the the part about the pin, did Ernie tell you what he was doing, like in chat or something? How did that yeah, work he out? messaged he messaged me saying he was gonna dump okay, it. Yeah, I was Scott. wondering. I was just like, <laughs> okay, because when he said he put it in there, I was just like, I don't recall him was, saying that. <laughs> and I said Rob's on chat. You remind me, it's it was zombies. We actually ran into zombies. I knew I was uh, forgetting a fight. Yeah. The uh, the pin he rolled a like a twenty three on stealth. Mm-hmm. And I had everybody roll a random D20. And that's what uh, I was. And Scott rolled a six. <laughs> so I knew there was no way he knew what happened. So I was up. wondering what was going on with the random. So, and then he yeah. then, and then he must have messaged you. They snuck back and dug it up. Mm-hmm. Jerk. <laughs> that was free. <laughs> like, hey, such as a Saturday night on Murder Hobo. It was, you know, if there were any buildings, you probably would have burned them down. So kind of how it was. There's a swamp. You can burn a swamp down. We could, but but bu- usually it's buildings, not whole swamps. Well, and they were in the eye of the storm as well. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but here's the... All right, so I'm, I guess that eye must have been huge enough that it didn't move the whole entire time because I know how hurricanes work. You got a couple I had to go hours. through a huge freaking wind field to get to the eye. Mm-hmm. I don't recall that happening. And once, you, once you're in, you got about... Yeah, I know. Hours. Yeah, yeah I know. It was a big eye. Oh, yeah. Oh, it went to, oh, so it was a Cat Five hurricane. I see. No, no, no. This is like a Cat tiny. Eight with a huge <laughs> eye. This is this I think fantasy, it Carol. I think it's a Tabaxi, tabaxi Eight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a In D D, it would be a Tabaxi Five. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that sounds like. A bard scenario there, the Tabaxi Five. There we go. All right, are we on to Sunday? We're on to Sunday, Frank. 
Episode 191, Depression of Sadness is the tri-generational game. It is played by a family uh, (laughs) and a whole lot of Franks. Uh, These guys are in the halfling kingdom of Dre Glary, uh, just trying to get supplies. Uh, The four elders had stepped off the boat, gone into town to go ahead and make uh, arrangements, uh, leaving the two youngest players on the boat with strict orders not to let anybody on uh, because both of the youth were gone the previous week. And that's how we just played it out. Well, this week they were here uh, and one of the halflings knocked on the hatch and said, your friends want to come in. So they opened the hatch and were immediately infiltrated with halflings, uh, which being young and careless, they decided to murder as many as they could on the ship. Uh, Obviously, that's what murder, murder, murder. On shore, it's murder uh, hobo, right? Felix and Copius found the madam of the bordello. Uh, Felix fortunately had a small concoction that he ordered from the apothecary that helped him. Unfortunately, it turned out to be uh, a lot like uh, Benny Hill gone bad uh (laughs) the druid the eldest member of the party the grandfather is in the sewers chasing the red vested halfling gang of 'er ne'er-do-well orphans that still have some of the party's shit uh so it is a clusterfuck they also found out that uh the welshmen uh, worship the god lit and they have a cart filled with valuables that they throw off the cliff every month at noon. And this has captured their attention. So we will see how they do this Sunday. Uh, that, along with all the other episodes that you've heard about tonight, are in the archive, uh, and some of them are still on Twitch. So feel free to check them out. And if you want to get in on one of those, hit us up. Kyle, back to you. Oh, back to me. Back, back to, to you. you. David, as again, we go into yeah. New Year, New Player. Wait, no. New Year, New You. Part there you go. Two. There you go. Part uh, you know, I thought about it as soon as I saw it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what I'm doing the entire mm-hmm. night. New Year, New You. New, <laughs> new, new Year. And I'm, I part really two. can't do it. <laughs> Should it be New Do? New Year, New You, New Do? Yeah, damn. there we I go. I guess I'll have to cut my hair, huh? Yeah, shave it. Look like those two. No. The, yeah, take the barber feet. I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think you have the whiskers for it though. <laughs> no, no, well, that, I you don't. Just cut have it off them. the top. Put it on the bottom. Just put it, it on the bottom. Time. I don't even have to. I can just do this, you know. Wow! No, wow! That's gonna haunt me. <laughs> that is. <laughs> There's no such thing as bearded Carol. That's right. I, there is now. We're we're going yeah, there is now. <laughs> Get used to that one, Carol. <laughs> I didn't know she was a dwarf. I guess I should have known that. Yeah. No, I am not a dwarf. I'm not built. I may be short, but I'm not that short. I'm over five feet tall. Okay. Oh. Tall, dwarf. Oh, tall dwarf. I'm almost five at five four, okay? So I'm not that Watch out, she does. She has to jump to get on a bar stool, guys. Exactly. <laughs> no, I don't. She's got that vertical leap down. Uh-huh. No, no, I don't. But I do have hubby yeah, grab stuff off of high shelves for me. He's only four. He's only you five. You need one of those though. things that senior citizens have to, to reach things. Oh, the, oh the go for the, grabbers. Yes, there you go. <laughs> those are useful anything if you drop something behind your couch or hey, something. they're good. Uh, you know, you or drop something on the, the floor, couch. look it up. <laughs> yeah, well, nah, the couch couch is heavy, you know, and I'm a Needs 90 pound weight. <laughs> there we go. My strength is an eight, I think. My, if I was a DD character, my strength would be an eight. Where has got a lot of negative. strength. I just make her do it. <laughs> She'll lift it with one arm. All right, so what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, create uh, character creation. New year, you. new you. Part two, take it away, David. Go. Yeah. Well, to continue our conversation about uh, pl- uh, creating new characters uh, for campaigns or whether it's just you need one on the fly for a one shot. Um, <laughs> <That's a question. laughs> 
Yeah. Or if you're a person that creates characters prolifically like me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at this point where we, we had discussed some other aspects of character creation. Uh, tonight we're moving on into more specific areas like the, the first topic we're going to talk about is race. Uh, what are the pros? What are the cons uh, to certain races? A lot of races have uh, different uh, abilities that are either a boon or they could have, um, you know, an ability or they could have something that's not so great trait like, uh, well, we'll go into that. But like, for example, sunlight sensitivity or something like that, which can hinder you and half your stuff. <laughs> I did not see that. All I see is Dave. <laughs> You're gonna have to fill me in, Kyle. Um, check, check, <laughs> chat. Open it up man. and read it. Read oh, chat. Jesus. Okay, so what do you wrote? Oh, right, right, wait for our viewers because they cannot see the chat we have on Zoom. Oh, jeez. Prolific okay. creators: Attila the Hun, Thomas Jefferson, and David. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that, that was Kyle. That was, hey. yeah, that was Kyle that wrote that. That is awesome. We could probably add a lot more to that list, too. Oh, yeah. So, Carol, the question gets uh, oh, to you yeah. first, <laughs> just as you were taking a drink. Yeah. Uh, hey, we'll, we'll make that a game. <laughs> anyway, um, tell us um, your perspective on races. Like, um, for example, what do you consider when choosing a race? Are you thinking uh, about optimization or are you thinking about archetype or are you thinking just uh, about um, more of like a backstory for a character? Um, how does race determine your player how creation? Do, how do I determine what race mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. <clears throat> sometimes, yeah, sometimes it'll be, I'm guilty of doing it for optimization. Uh, but sometimes it's just, it's a concept of having my head of what I want to play, you know, and, and what I feel like I can, what best I can get, uh, get inside their skin, inside their mind to more effectively play that character. There's a reason why I do like, I do like to play humans. I do like to play elves. I feel like I can, I can get into that mindset better, but honestly, it's sometimes just just because I feel like it too. So like if I'm creating a character for a one shot and not a campaign, campaign I put a lot more thought into because I have to come up with the backstory and everything else for it. So I put a lot, of, I put more thought into it. But like when it's a one shot for a Saturday, one shots. What do I feel like playing that night? So sometimes it'll be based on the uh, the description of the scenario too uh, that Frank will toss out at us or whoever's running. Um, like. Uh, Oh, what was that? I can't remember the name of the, the, I can't remember the name of the game, but it was the one where basically we had no, no possessions. We started out as more or less like virt virtually slaves. So mm -hmm. I was thinking I want to bring in a fighter and have him have a, have a, like a, a pick axe or, or a sledgehammer. I came with a sledgehammer and <clears throat> as their weapon. And I was like, Oh, it totally, this totally feels like a dwarf. So that was sort of my mindset there. You know, it's like, it dwarves me. You, you can't help but equate mining and dwarves. It's, no, you know, you it's, it's a trope. <laughs> it's a trope that's been going on forever. So it wasn't hard to make that leap. So, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot, I mean, for me, like whenever I'm creating characters, there's always a lot of factors that go into why I pick any one of the various aspects of that and said and sometimes i'll try to make sure that the the character class isn't gonna i mean even if it's not ideal for the particular class i want the race is ideal for the class i want to play i still want to make sure it's not gonna sink and make it all that harder for me to play that particular there's some that i that if it's got like a negative to intelligence then a lot of times i won't touch wizards with them but a lot of times those a lot of times those races that might have that also are not necessarily the ones that do are known for having wizards in the ranks and a lot of times they can be suspicious of magic and such. So, you know, this said there's a lot of factors when I when it comes to me picking races. But that's just a few just a few things right there. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I run into when I'm uh, choosing a race, uh, the 
the knee jerk reaction is to go for a variant human because of the yeah. of the feet. <laughs> I always yeah. go for the feet. And yeah, I agree. Yeah, human, that's true. So it's not that hard. To but I've them. I've heard yeah. Jim Davis and Pruitt uh, give a solution to that. And it's just like they noticed that within uh, their campaigns, their games that they were running, people were just gravitating the mid-maxers to the variant human right off the bat so they could get the feet and hit the ground running with, uh, with their character, you know, using that there. You have a... You, you have an optimal thing for your character. So you kind of give it a little advantage. But one of the things that they did is they just said, okay, doesn't matter what you choose. Uh, everybody gets a feat, you know, level one, everybody gets a feat. And that, and I thought about that and that was a great way to kind of, you know, remedy that situation. <laughs> I mean, I, as a, as a first time DM when I was doing it, I kind of noticed my players doing that too. And uh, at that time, I didn't know how to do it. So I was just like, oh, okay, I guess we got a campaign of humans. There we go. So and then you pick variant human and you get two feats at the very beginning. Well, if you two. If everybody yeah, gets You get one. the free yeah, feet and then the very Oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you get two. Yeah. So. And anyway, there were still a bunch of humans in my campaign. There were, man. They were just <laughs> maxed out going in. It's just like, you See? know, great weapon master, heavy metal, oh, heavy armor master. So, I mean, but, I mean, the feats are nice, but I also find that a lot of the racial ability, special things that you get from mm -hmm. the various races are, are, are pretty damn nice in the home, right? Mm -hmm. And you get, you, and it's, you know, you're getting one feat a lot of times in those racial things, those racial bonuses or uh yeah bonuses. basically they you get more than one of those usually i think oh yeah well one so. of the things that they introduced in xanathars is actual racial feats now yeah oh that's and, that's cool and that yeah. is cool too kyle what is your um uh how do races factor into your character creation uh concept comes first Okay. And uh, usually when I do one shots, I do end up choosing the variant human for that feat simply because it is usually a low level one shot. And I want something to make that character or a little extra something like uh, Jub Jub the Barbarian. Uh, his backstory is that he ate a slime and now has a never ending hunger. Uh, uh, so he's essentially the blob. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so that's a cool that, concept. <laughs> great. And getting that feed at level one and just, you know, every single time he eats, he gains more bulk, which is more temporary HP. And that's essentially uh, uh, a warlock evocation. Ev evocation. Is that the word? I'm thinking? I think so. Yeah. Evocation. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's wrong, though. But or evocation. I don't no, know. That's see, that seems even wronger. Yeah. Invocation. In Invocation. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Invocation. Uh, I N. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. So for lower level characters trying to fit a concept, that variant human really scratches that itch for me personally. If it ends up being a higher level character or in a campaign, then definitely the race matters a little bit more to me to fit that concept. Cause I know that, you know, a feat's gonna be coming in later or the role play itself can convey better than than a one shot uh, um, like Clive uh, Frillo was uh, is originally a campaign um, character but I tried to make him and tried to role play him in a one shot he just doesn't work even though he is a variant human mm -hmm. with an extra feat to kind of help play up that uh, uh, viciousness of him but He's a very subtle character, and you can't do subtlety in one shots, in no. my opinion. <laughs> mm, you I, can, I think, but I think, to get the character concept across to other people, okay, uh, that's, then it's hard to be subtle about it. Which is something sure. that when you're both entertaining, oh no, that's and true. trying to be like, hey, check out my evil character, guys. Yeah, I'm evil. It's like, no, no. Evil should always be subtle in a in a group setting, in my opinion. Uh, and, I agree with that, by the way. 
And the totally. person guilty of that the most, Frank. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your character creations. Uh, as we all know, I'm an old school guy. And when I first started to play, Dwarf was a class. Uh, and Dwarf <laughs> was my first character. And he hasn't involved he, since then. Human was my <laughs> second. So. And I do not play variants. I try and play behind the eight ball characters because when they succeed it's usually just dumb luck uh or sheer force of will i Um, i love that i love love the dumb luck you had in my first one shot (laughs) i'm gonna press these buttons the spaceship starts to take off without everybody else (laughs) i think that was one of the few that i never died in (laughs) yes that's the only one i didn't die in you know i'm pretty sure carol wasn't part of that one shot either or David, so that's probably oh. why you know, I die. You know, maybe that's something to be said about playing a variant human when he freaking dies all the time. And But see, I, do, I mean, no, I don't play very... Actually, one other thing I was going to say is, yeah, dumb luck, but you've also forgot to add creative outside-of-the-box thinking. Sometimes sometimes coming up some wacky, crazy idea, that also can get you out of trouble, too. I think that was implied. (laughs) You see, Frank is so old, he comes from that era where the player is the character and the character is the player. We mold ourselves around each other. They become a lot of of pittens. Doesn't matter. You can, you know, make it a dwarf, elf, goliath, variant human inside that chocolatey outer shell is that asshole Frank. That's right. <laughs> Just moving the gears around trying to figure it out. It's so, like yeah, a bastard-coated I, I, bastard with bastard feelings. <laughs> there you go. So, so I only play standard humans or dwarves mm-hmm. because dwarves give me the opportunity to use my cool language skills yeah that uh the russian? scottish russian accent whatever it is welsh scottish russian russian, russian. it's always russian it's nice. nice yeah that's that's and it doesn't matter uh i not clearly not a fan of mages never have been um i, I love the concept of being able to wield magic i it just don't just doesn't I, do it for you huh yeah with scots playing the wizard uh I had played that scenario before, so I knew what to expect. I knew to hang back, and I knew I had maybe four rounds at best before I was going to be Swiss cheesed, and that's what it was. It was four rounds, and he Swiss cheesed me. So nice, nice. Well, um, with uh, some of the races, like we said, there are sometimes disadvantages to certain races and things like that, or uh, just, I mean, what if you're a player and you do you know you choose a race and suddenly you're just like oh what did i do but like to avoid that caveat and all that are what are some of the races that have like the biggest cons and that you know you try to stay away from i mean i mentioned two that were obvious drow and kobolds uh i'm sure there are other other races that have disadvantages to them too i just can't think of them off the top of my head no, I know from a very specific campaign. Okay, all right. Yeah, no. That's well, the best way to entertain online audiences, Frank. Inside <laughs> jokes. Like That's right. Knows. That is. Because <laughs> well, I had no Explain clear. the man. Explain them. No. Uh, he, well, they, to be the fair, a centaur was, was a con. <laughs> that, that was the first one. Yeah, the uh, oh, player, the PC had very low intelligence and low wisdom. And played it very well because oh, wait. if I... he was retarded, he, that's what he'd do. Well, like for example, one of the things in my home campaign that I get, uh, I swear, uh, she she really takes advantage of this, uh, my DM. But I rolled an Azamar bard, and with a like seriously high charisma. And that crap can backfire on you really quick. Why? I mean, depending on your DM. Well, well, what did I'll tell she you, do, man. What did she do? Okay. Well, tell us more. Tell us more. Okay. Almost everywhere where this Asimar goes, because of his high charisma and just the <laughs> nature of Asimars, them being unique and you know, kind of intriguing and stuff like that. She plays that, and yeah. 
there's always going to be some kind of romantic encounter or something like that. There's always going to be some kind of tension. <laughs> and then there's always going to be some kind of caveat, like uh, one time, okay, casual hookup. Yeah, ended in a pregnancy. So yeah, now that character <laughs> has you a know, bastard child out You know, there. strangely, that's you where know. I thought you were going the first time. And then you were like, rare Asmar. And I was like, oh, no, this isn't just hookups. This is people wanting to skin him and autopsy him. No, wait, well, wait, wait, we wait, didn't wait, get wait, to that to part yet. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, we'll That's get to that. Wait, like, David, for example, David. cults are after da Asimars. Uh, okay, da so. David, David, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this there. That, you know, you could always just not engage in activities that would result in pregnancies. Not when you fail your he check and you roll a one. He said he's a bard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, obviously. Come no, on. it's not just that. There should be, there should always, when it comes what to what she hits me days, with, though, is you should have used your words and you should have rolled better. So, well, that you me. can't help how you roll. Um, no. and I mean, to be all right, fair, I'll you be can use pirate dog dice, exactly. <laughs> all right, admittedly, like I'm, a, I'm, I'm admittedly, dice. I'm a GM that actually is guilty of that very thing, and I did it to DJ with the succubus, and there was a succubus, there you and, go, and man. his, it is cleric Asuna, Asuna, so yeah, sorry, but DJ. But Kyle brought up a good point, point. One of the drawbacks of being an Asimar is, is that, you know, fiends and infernals are going to be drawn to you. It's just, you know, because like Kyle said, they're looking to skin you or whatever. Uh, a good DM will absolutely take and consider the small details like that. If you just mm -hmm. say, oh, yeah, I'm going to play an Asimar so I can have a really high charisma as a bard. And they're like, yeah, sure, go ahead. The the good DM uh, uh, looks at that and says, "An Asmar, really? Yeah, okay, intriguing. You're hunted, and uh, remember that angelic voice in your head that you forgot about? Yeah, I'm here. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God, does this mean I should bring an Asmar into the campaign? But I would Kyle hope you just don't told because, you because yeah. uh, someone wants to play a warlock, and I have to think about that one." That's fine. Wait, give why? me one plate to spin here, please. Hey, as oh war, no, no, warlock. no, no! I'm I'm coming into your campaign. I'm going to be giving you word. plates, Hard man. Railroad right over you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There will be. I, I will have be. children, Carol. A family. I can't get divorced this year. It'd be awful. <laughs> well, one of one of the other right. things I I They'd think of find or, the hole what? with the bodies in it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I can think of is that 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 hits you with a negative right away is playing a monstrous race. You know, people think they're cool. Oh, I'm going to play a goblin, going to play a bugbear, going to play... Uh, you, goblins you know, are cool, thank you very much. They are. They no downsides. See? But there are downsides. You walk into a town, you got to deal with that, you know? So, I mean, you know, goblins have... Yeah, Carrie, <laughs> Carrie just popped on and probably no one can hear, but she says necromancers are the best. Yeah, they are the best. So goblin necromancer. That's a <laughs> that wait, so, that totally so anyway, works. that's that's one of the, the things that you can you should consider when you're trying to I don't know, uh play a monstrous race. I mean, you will run into DMs that are really gonna take advantage of things like that. So I mean, you know, there are there is prejudice in D and D, and you know it will come up. So, I mean, but. another thing to think about: uh, centaurs. They're a really fun race until you have to climb a ladder. Climb a ladder, yeah. or go into a dungeon and make a stealth check. You know, see, click, see, click, click, click. that's that's the thing is I I view yeah I view a lot of monstrous races as just highly impractical. First, because of that reason. Yeah, centaur. I don't know. I also can't, don't think I can really have a hard time thinking about being a centaur. I, don't I will know. say, though, uh, a friend of mine and I both played bugbears. Mm -hmm. And that one might of the be challenges fun. to the dungeon was that you had to press two buttons on the opposite side of a large doorway at the same time. And so, as bugbears, you got that extra reach. <laughs> <laughs> Three doors, and we we're like, okay, I'll get the first one. He'll get the second one. Hey, human, you get the third one. Any oh. day now. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Oh, man, I swear. Um, 
like for example the Talosian uh thing on cacophony frank yeah i'm surprised we haven't run into any centaurs i mean you put it in the the you, you will you will the campaign yeah, yeah you you won't run into centaurs you'll run into remix the yes. lion-headed centaurs oh oh well, even better been playing zelda <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, there. Was, I was just reading an article on why why you don't use it because they're always evil and they're always assholes. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <Check>. <laughs> that you is know, gonna make an appearance. I can role play that. <laughs> so, hey, that's gonna be another th- between the roles. Why you know picking picking NPCs and monsters? Uh, 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 what what's your methodology? <laughs> Frank's. Exactly. We all know what Frank's is. So it's. If it's Check. an asshole, Check. there you go. That's his basis for every MPC if they got to be an asshole. Okay. Well, every. To oh, move yeah. things right along to our uh, to our next point on the outline, uh, classes. Okay. Uh, classes. Uh, newbie versus experience. How does that affect in uh, the class? selection in your opinion i mean there are some classes that new players should definitely stay away from i uh, disagree with that statement but only i know you do that's why i brought it up so so kaya why don't you take it from there uh uh no i mean any class for D I think is good for the player provided they are are a good fit for that for people who like to read a lot wizards are the perfect thing because you have to read the entire handbook mm-hmm. congratulations on that decision, you moron. Uh, or you can DM. Or you can DM. Shit. That's, yeah. <laughs> where's the fun in that, though? Um, I mean, as far as uh, uh, flaws in picking classes and things to watch out for, it's just the, the little details will get you. I mean, uh, I think uh, Sorcerer, War, not Warlock, Sorcerer. A sorcerer and wizard both have a d6 for a hit die mm-hmm. and if you're like well i'm gonna be this cool awesome blade singing wizard swinging a sword around and then you get hit once and your character in 12 hit dies. points <laughs> yeah and it's like well you gotta pay attention and then there's a way to play a character like that and i mean that's the really the only the only real traps that I think you'll find in picking a class. Uh, uh, and if any of them are a trap, I think I said last week too, talk to your DM. Be like, mm-hmm. I think I chose the wrong class for me. Can I make some adjustments or something? And if Frank is your DM, he'll laugh at your face and then try and kill your character. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. I really love that gnome. Guilty. I- Oh, you, oh, he! You I, complained that you that was a bad fit, and Frank killed it. No, no, Frank never. That happened that. to me with that. I say Frank I love my somebody? character, Frank. I'm really excited about my character, Frank. And then he killed me. <laughs> I didn't think Frank killed anyone. I mean, you know, you said he was going to try so hard in the campaign to kill All one right. of us. To be it. fair, <laughs> just kidding. I went back into the dangerous room myself. Oh. And I didn't read the spell entirely. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's... Form, you do take damage. <laughs> you know what? That that it's like what you said. It's the small details that you get. Yeah, and even if you feel like you know, like any of us who've been the most experienced players. Yeah. At least your associates continued the barrage of damage. Exactly. <laughs> they did. I, you mean me? What was, was the knock spell? Because I didn't realize that I had the for it. That at audible. Least these, <laughs> that, yeah, I didn't realize I had the. I mean, I think I knew it had an audible, but I didn't realize it was now like a three hundred foot. You know, was it radius or diameter? Boom. Radius. 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 So yeah, so six hundred foot diameter. Uh, I didn't realize it was that loud. I mean, it said not that it mattered. What? I had to use it. Man. <laughs> Yeah, why aren't you, you know, it's funny how, like, you think in the spell was something that loud that you'd have to make saves so you could You hear. would think uh, your 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 party to, members would have to do a constitution yeah, check. Yeah, it'd be like a thun, you know, like a, geez, like a thunderstorm or something like that. Boom. I, you know, but the, the said it is, it's the little details, like, in spells and stuff that will absolutely get you. Um, I also, like, I, the other thing I thought that was hard to do, 
uh, as and I'm not a new player, but taking something that I didn't start at first level and slowly learn. I like to learn as I go. So I learn the abilities you get that level and then build on it was the artificer. I don't think that's a particularly easy one to play for new players unless. Oh. Yep. Does, uh, doesn't say there's a save just when cast a loud knock audible from as far away as 300 feet emanates from the target. Yeah, so as far away. Oh, no, I believe that. Feet. So if you're not in a dungeon, it echoes back 300 feet. I'm here. But maybe I'm if you're here. outside I'm at here. a festival, it goes by unnoticed and gets absorbed by all the tapestries and the harem. <clears throat> I also Welcome was kind of ca- I also was kind of counting on there was going to be a lot of chaos and stuff. So was, you know that it would kind of be in the empty alleyway. Sure. 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 It, was also an, it was also an empty alleyway, so no one was there. I'm talking about the front, so the side, and down by, you know, in the streets around. Guys, if you're interested in the story of Taryn, feel free Shut to up. go back into our archives on YouTube <laughs> and check out the last campaign. But you mean, make sure you start after um, she meets her name? alcoholic boyfriend who's in Right. Music. Yeah, there you go. Well, one of the things that I'll, I'll bring up with cast uh, class selection when it comes to uh, creating a character is like within the magic user spectrum, it's just like, okay, do you want your can your cantrips and your spells set or do you want to change them daily? Well, not the cantrips, but, but daily, uh, your spells daily. I mean, do those factors ever um, kind of sway you with uh, choosing a class for your character? Not when you're a fighter. There you go. <laughs> Unless you're an elder. I said on the Frank. on the spellcaster nope, schedule. <laughs> I'm not even a paladin. <laughs> um, for that, if it's a campaign, then I want uh, I generally want the uh, spellcaster to be able to choose spells daily, mm-hmm. and I always have a certain set of spells. It's like okay, if I don't know what's happening tomorrow. Mm-hmm. These are the spells that he always has, she always has prepared. Um, that's day-to-day spells, and it's like, oh, you're traveling. Okay, I might change one spell for, you know, make sure that you stay warm on this or something like that, but that's the only change <laughs> I have a set list. Um, uh, for a one-shot, it's never matters, so mm-hmm. yeah. at that yeah. point, I guess it's more... Uh, uh, who are you people? Where am yeah. I? Yeah, where am <laughs> I? Where's my stroke? granddaughter? <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. I'm kind of running into that uh, every once in a while as a DM with uh, the my home game that I'm running. And, uh, like, for example, like, I forget sometimes that the healer is not a cleric and is a divine soul sorcerer. So I'll hit them with something. It's just like, you know, I'll drop a hint. It's just like, what about lesser restoration? She goes, I can't, I can't do that yet. Yeah, it's it's like, very expensive. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. And if you're not, a cleric is the fastest way to get that, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nope, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Cleric. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, he so, was, I was going to say, he was, so, so Carrie just brought up the whole puppy incident from the campaign. Yeah. Where Kyle killed his puppy. You drive then, me to this, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> although, although we do have to say to our wonderful producer, there was a clerk in the party, but somebody <clears throat> did not throw any diamonds in the, you know, 300 GP diamonds in any of the loot. So you could have a diamond. Whoa, 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 Hold on. How about, <laughs> there was a gem the, of true seeing. How about the, the PC at that time? ask, hey, can you do this instead of just assuming? <laughs> that wasn't my fault. Oh, no, no, no. That wasn't your fault. But but most GMs, when people get uh, to that review, last final, time make checked, sure there's a diamond or two out there. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No metagaming. You just kill the hobgoblins. And get that gem to save your puppy. Hi, well, hello. How are you guys? I attack. Yeah, totally <laughs> derail. That thing went so far off the rails. I mean, I remember what you had planned because I was part of the plan, and that went, that went, that ended up at the bottom of a thousand foot ravine. And That's what the train went. I no longer went. murder hoboed after that. I was you're right. Being clear, I didn't feel mm. like murder hobo. The jail cell, but to be fair, that was Frank's fault. 
After that, no murder. <laughs> that that, no, that no, was, was, was my fault. <laughs> that yeah, was, I'll sure. take that. I'll accept that. Nice. Mm. Last question. 50, I'm going to divert. I'm going to shoot this straight <laughs> straight to Frank and all that campaign restrictions, pro con, and he's, he's is it fair? Just absolutely. No, dying no, I'm to not go. dying to go. You go, Frank. No, no, David is dying oh. to hear this one. Okay. Uh, well, oh yeah, well, actually, I am. Have you too. not gone over this stuff with your players yet? No, nope, not yet. He hasn't nope. made any choices yet. <laughs> we know Neither what he does. But... Wait, we all know what he isn't going to allow because he said it like 500 times. No yeah. fucking change. No Goliath, no changelings, no No dra- Goliath. Why not? Goliath isn't that. It's not like a changeling that can really There, there are two different campaigns coming. Okay. For folks at home that don't understand this, there we've got two new campaigns coming at you. One is going to be on Thursday, and that's going to be run by Kyle. He has his specific set of players uh, that we've determined on Saturday, I will go ahead and have a different set of players and a different campaign. Kyle has offered two choices to his players. I will also offer two choices to oh, you mine. Are. Yes. I. Uh, so one of them is very specific, but has a really great twist in it. Uh, and that one, uh, if they choose that campaign, everybody is going to be the same race. Or if they yes. choose a different race, they will be an outcast uh, and suffer, shall we say, a penalty on things. Um, when Minus you, 17 to all stats. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> every, every one through five is a crit fail. Uh, <laughs> when I design a campaign, normally I design it wide open. Uh, some things in 5e I find just brutally offensive to my personal palate. Uh, changelings and Sonics are two of them. Uh, I didn't like, psionics. yeah, I didn't like Psionics in 1E and 2E. I sure shit don't like it in 5E. Um, changelings, <sighs> between David and Blake, I hate those fucking characters. I, I try not to, really man, I try not to shape too you know, often. Zidane Drow was doesn't... up there, but then Changelings just jumped right just past Meat frog over. And Goliath, I... I just, I just, for what I have planned, okay. I don't want him crawling around. Yeah. Because I'm a little that, surprised. Be a disadvantage. He, I'm surprised and he hates you with the Changeling, David. What's that? I'm surprised you really hate you as a changeling because you have not abused it like Blake did. To me, Blake abused I try not ability, to. I, man. I, I, I don't I, I don't blame either player. I just don't like the concept behind it. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> I mean they're in they're opinion. it's because he's old and set in his ways. Well, Let's face I, it. I mean, there are some some abilities that, that can be you know, just a, a thorn in the DM side. I mean, if we would have had a session sure. zero before cacophony and Frank said no change list, then yeah, I would have, I would have. Cacophony was just going to be a wide open Western. Yeah. And right. that was, that was the first episode. The second episode turned out a little different and third episode. Right. different after well, that. So, yeah. I mean, it just kind of evolved the way that it was, uh, you know, Zadar was the first character that I played. I tried <laughs> uh, another character i tried the little halfling uh warlock with the genie patron and um just never followed up on it that's when uh carrie i mean even carrie switched characters but she kept the one that she switched to um, i think i think the problem with the changeling is this if you're looking at a medieval milieu or mm-hmm. milieu uh, those people can be terrified of things Mm -hmm. so if a changeling even by accident changes in front Mm -hmm. of somebody that's a fucking witch and they're gonna burn him and kill him and they're gonna focus in on him i've been uh, lucky that frank hasn't done that to me i mean i did have the the where i had to demonstrate that i was a changeling in front of a council in front of like a court Yep. 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 Yeah. I was that close to declaring you a witch. Yeah. (laughs) uh, And and that is why I don't like change. Twenty. Yeah. If if you had a magic user in old England, they hang. I mean, they just friggin' hang them. A changeling. Give me a fucking break. Even in 2021, if somebody walked in front of me and said, 
<laughs> Holy <course>. shit. <laughs> I got a problem here. Yeah. They're going to walk out and they're going to be me. <laughs> see, Frank, the, the difference is, see, if you throw that out there, I'd play a changeling just for the challenge of not yes, getting... Yes. You know, I mean, that, that's that. a thing. He, yeah. uh, and I think that would campaign. be, that's a very interesting thing to play. He did have a campaign where magic was absolutely a forbidden thing. People hated it. Three or four of the six players were like, yeah, I'm going to be a magic user. And that really, uh, I felt like, threw off the whole kilter of magic is forbidden kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with player... Uh, class restrictions in that case that would have solved a lot of issues and it's like yeah that's cool you cannot do this right now maybe at some point we can interject where you guys get magic and multi-class into that but for right now you are ordinary people pick from one of the ordinary classes and that is i learned from that and that is one of the campaign offerings mm -hmm. that is the whole concept behind it there may be magic it ain't here right now yep. so i although I, mean, I was one of those put my husband did run a game where uh sorcerers and such were viewed upon with uh were hunted so knowing that fact <laughs> i like to play those type of things where i'm being hunted by something yeah. yes there's a game i play I, where I if you say there. you can't do something but don't actually say you can't, can't do it. Yeah, no. And that Your was, players will do it. And mm -hmm. not actually, I think I was the only one who did in that game. It, it depends. It depends on if your players want that level of challenge. Because yeah. for well, me, you were that's the what DM, it is. So, yeah, you know. exactly. No, that had yeah. nothing to do with it. <laughs> he told everyone else yeah, that, yeah. no, you can't do this. No, and no, no. And then he no. let you do it. You no. did the eyes. Actually, no, 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 no. He would, he, no, he's not that type. He would, he would totally let people do it and work around. I think I'm trying to make somebody play else play sorcerer, one of those. Types. Right? Sure. <laughs> well, he, yeah, but he knows, <laughs> but he knows I'm doing it just because it, this, mm -hmm. this is the promise that it's the life will be difficult. And I do tend to like that for my PCs. Yeah. I was in friggin' absolute heaven as a player. Even though Taryn was going through hell. I loved well, it so much. Well, I mean, I jumped on Changeling because it's just like, okay, Arch Arcane Trickster Rogue. There we go. That's it does me. make sense for the yeah. it does make sense for the what you picked as a as a as a class. Right. Well, that's it's a that's a great con to me, that is a good concept. But I saw it's how Blake was using it. I was like, oh no, that is broken and Frank doesn't like it. <laughs> so <laughs> So I so I do my best not to abuse it. I mean, because yeah, and he had, he only changed into one of three people for the most yeah. part. So yeah, yeah, no, he was and, he kept, kept it modified. And the yeah. reality is, most time you're just doing it for flavor. You're doing it. To, it is it's strictly for flavor. To it's what what do you feel like playing tonight? You know. Yeah. It doesn't really affect how the game runs at all. Well, that's one of the things that I do. I try to make it fun. You know, by changing into a celebrity from the 80s or pop culture or something yeah, like I love that. I love that I just don't like the class it's not yeah. that I don't like the way David plays Race. a changeling right I don't no, like a changeling I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the concept of a changeling is just yeah I mean it you know that's the thing it's you know likes and dislikes are subjective so just because well, I may like it it's and, fair and that you don't David actually pointed out in the gith episode in cacophony where my part of my hatred lies and his explanation of you know maybe he and his people came on a slave ship from the githanki and i, I really don't like using the gith unless <laughs> they are limited in scope uh and just not even intermittent just mm -hmm. very rare uh and with that okay if the changelings came from the gith they too should be very rare and used very intermittently, in my opinion. Just oh, my I opinion. agree. I so. definitely agree. 
So. But yeah, a whole party of changelings. I just nuke you guys from <laughs> TPK <laughs> right off the bat. And That's the right. dragon appears. Hey, hey, hey. folks, we're going to do one shots all Saturday for the rest of forever because <laughs> these guys are dicks. Hey, 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 Frank. You see a prehistoric setting. There are dinosaurs running there, an active volcano, and underneath lies a village of changelings. We see four characters. I'm not going to introduce you. The volcano blows up and you all die. <laughs> hey, 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 Frank. I had the, another GM said the party I want is only a TPK away. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. true. Nice. See, I, I like for the players to uh, be no. creative. I yeah. agree. I, mean, I agree. I would much rather you guys beat me on merit than anything else. Yeah. Not on shitty diaries. Well, we don't have merit, let's be honest. <laughs> well, I don't want to assume the consensus, but I mean, we we all uh, pretty much think, you know, class restrictions and or race constrictions are fair. I mean, because, I mean, you know, unchecked, some things can just completely well, derail your game, you know. Let, let me make one more point. I know we're running along here, but um, yeah. let me make one point. Terrible. Also... Also, you do have to consider the setting too. I mean, mm -hmm. some settings they don't have race, certain races in it, or maybe classes. When we were talking about, uh, you know, when we were going through the whole like world building thing, where we were talking about different time periods, you know, right. wizards before there were there was written language really wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So dragon you know, lance. Yeah, things yeah. that there are things there are definitely restrictions like to that to me are totally fair i mean mm -hmm. in my world i mean in my my setting i actually do have like i only have certain races that live there i don't really for like one shots and stuff i don't really worry too much about it but um because i don't feel like coming up with a list and sending it out to you guys well yeah. maybe but that's the goal of that the game. campaign mm -hmm. you know you need maybe. to revive the holy order of the paladins no paladins, you just have to revive it. Yeah. That would be interesting. That's an interesting idea for a campaign, actually. You want to be a paladin? Uh, just be a really high charisma fighter, and at level 19, you can bring back the paladins and multi-class. And, <laughs> and then we're done, folks. New campaign time. <laughs> yeah, go. level 19. <laughs> you raise your sword in the air, unable to cast smites or spells because you're a level 1 paladin. And that's it, folks. <laughs> Volcano, everybody you look dies. Great with a cross on your chest, though. <laughs> nice. So, well, I think that closes out our outline for tonight. So, Cal, you want to take us out of here? Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm Kyle, and I'm going to take you out of here. I just want to tell you to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. It's also on Twitch, also on YouTube. What? If you want to shoot the shit about DD, come to our Discord channel. If you want to get our cool RPG gift, friends and family, try our store that's listed around here. And if you want to get onto one shot around show or possibly onto the campaign to replace Carol, go talk to us at Imhobo Inc. at Twitter or at Gmail. Thank you to our sponsors, Fire I'm Dice. I'm going to fucking dice, Saturday then. And don't forget about Odd Fish Game. Odd Fish Game, they're a wonderful sponsor. They have Adventure Sense, and they they will make you puke a lot. So much, so much, so much, so much for you again. Everywhere, everywhere, where it took me all night to clean up that mess. And then don't forget about the Shine Project. Shine Project, you have to write a story, have to write a story, you have to write a real good story. These are the questions you got to get yourself asked if you want to write a good story. Uh, I believe that's everything we have, everything we have to say. Oh, don't forget about our podcast, our podcast. I put it away. I apologize. Thursday, Thursday's show. Yeah. Would you just wait till I get to the show? <laughs> I will always discount your show, Carrie. That's because you don't want to play with me in my campaign so I can kick Carol out. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Uh, don't hey. forget about our podcast, our only only podcast audios are tiny at URL.com slash Imhobo Inc. Audio. And then don't forget about the games this week. We got a game on Thursday. You can't play in that one because Carrie's playing in that one. Carrie doesn't like to play her uh, <laughs> Thursday slot at all. So it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you can join us on this Saturday One Shot. Uh, again, make sure you talk to us at Imhobo Inc. on Twitter or Imhobo Inc. at gmail.com. Uh, Sunday is the Firth of Franks. Obviously, it's it's, yes. it's their day. It's Frank's day. <laughs> and everybody wave goodbye. Wave goodbye. Everybody wave goodbye. Oh, look at everyone waving like a princess. Waving like a princess. Can I get one?